Hello and welcome back to Mikey's Flight Tech. Do you know the situation? You have built a new component for your flight simulator and then you end up with this red nest of cables, everything has to be connected to your controller card and you still have to know which cable leads to which device after that. How you can achieve this, I will show you in this video. When it comes to connect cables to your Arduino, then the first thoughts go to these pin headers here, which are mostly used on a breadboard when you start experimenting with the Arduino. They can be easily um, pushed here into this uh, Arduino ports, but they can also easily be pulled out. And this can get you a hard time to uh, search for the failure here. So I came across these circuit breakout boards. You can add some pin headers around it and build a shield for your Arduino Major. And on this shield, you can solder all the cables and even um, resistors, which you will need for connecting LEDs. These sorted connections can be ripped off accidentally. So I show you how you can make a shield out of this breakout board and connect some cables to it. The needed pin headers can be cut off from the row very precisely with a coping saw and a metal cutting blade. So now that all the pins are connected to the breakout board, you can mount this on top of the Arduino. But when you do this, make sure that you push it all the way in because otherwise you could end up with a pin that is not connected to the pin of the Arduino and this is a failure which is very hard to find. So let's have a look now onto the board and how I'm planning to organize the components and cables on it. I decided to place resistors on this breakout board here in a row on the bottom part and this will connect the upper pins of this double row with a resistor and if i will need additional resistors i can place them here and here in a row this means that any devices that won't need an additional resistor like buttons switches rotary encoders and so on can be uh, connected to the lower pins of this double row and to the pins in these corners here. When I start adding devices to this breakout board, then I will also start with these pins here on the bottom side and then make my way onto pins on the other sides. To show you the cable management in real life, I have chosen my glare wings, which aren't connected to an Arduino until now. By the way, if you want to build your own glare wings, then watch my corresponding video. There are two LEDs in each of the colored buttons and six LEDs in the recall annunciator, which will make eight LED cables in total for these buttons. Then there are three buttons and uh, one shared ground connection. So we come out with 12 cables that have to be connected to the Arduino. And I will start by adding all the resistors for the LEDs. As you have seen, I'm using different cable colors. So let's talk about the colors for the different devices. Green cables connect buttons and switches. Purple leads to the LEDs. Black are ground connections. Yellow controls seven segment displays. Red transports five volts. Blue connects motors. Orange stands for potentiometers. 
brown leads to encoders, and white are any internal connections. I want to know to which device a cable is connected when I see it. And to achieve this, I will print out a label with a code for each cable and attach it to it. By the way, this code is the same code that I will use for the device in a Mobi flight. But what is the logic behind this code? That I can show you in my connection sheet. I have already showed my connection sheet in the last video and I don't want to go in details with all these prosim and offset variables. If you want to know more about these, you can watch my last video. This video I will concentrate on the hardware like the cables and plugs. So in the first column you can see the number of each cable connection, which is a combination of the letter of the Arduino and a number. All my Arduinos are named with letters from A upwards like A, B, C and so on. And so I can see that all these connections here are going to the Arduino A and the number is only counting upwards. In the next column you can see the pin to which this cable will be connected to the Arduino and you can see the type of the device that is connections which is telling me which cable color I have to use. At the end I can find the name of the DSOP plug with which the cables will be connected to the Arduino and here you find a naming which is made of the letter of the Arduino like uh, in this case A and the number of the DSOP plug. Here you can see right at the moment there are two DSOP plugs connected to the Arduino A, A1 and A2. The number behind the DSOP plug number shows to which pin the ground connection is welded to the plug. And the last column shows to which pin of the DSOP plug every cable is connected. You may have noted that I have printed out two labels of each code. And this is because I will place one label here near the glare wing and another one near the end of the cable. And this is because when I have to do maintenance work, I will look at the connected device, which is the glare wing here, or at the soldering point at the Arduino, which is at the end of the cable. It will also help me when I solder the cable to the Arduino breakout board to find the corresponding pin of each cable. And when I'm looking at the glare wing here, at the components, then I directly can see which code belongs to which device here. Now with all the cables labeled, I can go on to the next step. I want to keep all the components of the cockpit as modular as possible. Right now, the glare wing wouldn't be removable from the cockpit because it is soldered to the Arduino. And to keep it modular, I will cut all the cables here and install a DSOP plug. Here I have a plug with 15 pins and this is enough to hold all the connections of this glare wing. I also have DSOP connectors with 25 pins and these can be used when there are more cables to connect. Now let's have a big soldering session to connect the cables to the plugs and to the Arduino breakout ports. All ground cables were combined to one single cable. I have soldered all the cables to the DSUP plug now and written down all the pins I have used in my connection sheet. 
Now I have to protect these solar rings and for this I have 3D printed a housing for the d -sub plug. It can be printed out in two identically halves and can be screwed together with two screws and two nuts. That's all. You can download them from Thinkiverse. They you can find a lot of different designs and I will link you the one I have used down in the video description. To control all the functions of the two glare wings, a single Arduino would be more than enough. But I decided to use two of them. And this is because the two glare wings are located at the both outsides of the cockpit and I can combine them with the two upcoming EFIS panels. And if then there are any pins left over, I can let them control some of the functions of the MCP. Back in the cockpit, I reinstalled the two glare wings and will route the cables here to the Arduinos, which will be mounted in a row here on top of this glass shield plate. The Arduinos will be mounted on a holder, which is 3D printed and the design can be found on Thinkiverse. And the advantage of mounting it with such a holder is that you can screw the Arduino onto the holder and then screw the holder to the wooden plate here. And if you want to lose it, then you can just lose the holder and instead of losing a screw which uh, is covered here under the breakout board and you can't reach it with a screw. So I think in the future I will add some more Arduinos here if it is necessary and I will build a cover to protect them from any dust here in the room. The cables can be routed with 3D printed guides like here behind the overhead panel. So this was a short introduction into my cable management. I'm still at the beginning of all this electronic stuff in the cockpit, but I think keeping things modular and easy to disassemble will help me to do changes or any refactorings in the future if they are necessary. But now it's time to go on to the next section of the overhead panel and to not miss this episode, subscribe to my channel to stay informed about any upcoming new video from me. And I hope we'll see you soon back on the flight deck.